Now I have the uh, pleasure to announce that the Assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Najib Miqati, President of the Council of Ministers of the Lebanese Republic. I request the protocol to escort His Excellency, and I have great pleasure in welcoming His Excellency Najib Miqati, President of the Council of Ministers of the Lebanese Republic, I invite him to address the Assembly. Your Excellency Ambassador Dennis Francis, President of the General Assembly. Your Excellency Mr. Antonio Guterres. Ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, I congratulate you, Mr. President, on your election as President of the 78th Session of the General Assembly. I wish you success in this mission and assure you of the support of the Delegation of Lebanon for the forward-looking program you have set for the coming year. Mr. President, this year marks the 80th anniversary of Lebanon's independence, eight decades during which Lebanon has been striving to deserve its place among the peace and welfare-loving nations. Lebanon was one of the founding fathers of this organization, and it had a remarkable contribution in the drafting of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. But it hasn't always been an easy journey. Besides the bright chapters of stability, growth, prosperity, and peace building, Lebanon has also known long and extremely difficult phases, with frequent conflicts on its territories, in the neighboring countries, and wars of aggression against it. It all culminated in a prolonged occupation of parts of its territories, two protracted refugee and displacement crises, leading to an unprecedented economic, financial, and humanitarian crisis. Lebanon is today facing numerous overlapping crises against the backdrop of a weakened international system and a regional climate full of tensions and challenges. These challenges weigh heavily on the Lebanese people, suffering daily from a lack of basic moral and material elements that enable them to resist. In addition to the brain and youth drain and the receding hope in the eyes of many Lebanese men and women. The first among such challenges is the vacancy of the Presidency of the Republic and the inability to elect a new president. This led to an institutional and political instability. It also led to the exacerbation of the economic and financial crisis and the failure to launch the reforms and economic and financial recovery plans on which the Lebanese depend to save the country. I sincerely look forward to the Lebanese Parliament exercising its sovereign role by electing a President of the Republic in the coming period, a President around whom the Lebanese would unite and who will enshrine the return of the Republic through the Presidency and constitutional institutions, and Lebanon's return to fulfilling its mission and playing its leading role in close cooperation with our Arab brethren and our friends in the international community. In this context, I commend the role played by the Committee of Five, as well as the French initiative aimed at helping to achieve this constitutional milestone. Mr. President, 12 years into the Syrian crisis, Lebanon is still bearing the burden of successive waves of displacement with far-reaching economic and social repercussions on all aspects of life thus threatening Lebanon's very existence. 
Although we have already voiced our concerns in all international fora, and in particular in this forum, the international community's response to this humanitarian tragedy is still timid and falls short of an effective, sustainable solution. From this rostrum, I warn once again against the negative repercussions of displacement, which deepens Lebanon's crisis. But Lebanon will not be the only victim. I repeat, Lebanon will not be the only victim. I reiterate the call for the development of a roadmap in cooperation with all the international stakeholders to find sustainable solutions to the Syrian displacement crisis before its repercussions spiral out of control. In this regard, I would like to mention a positive development. Lebanon has reached an agreement with UNHCR on the exchange of information pertaining to the Syrian presence in Lebanon. This agreement reflects our attachment to deepening cooperation with international and UN organizations as part of the sustainable solution we seek. The third challenge is Israel's continued occupation of parts of our land in the south, its ongoing aggressions and daily violations of the Lebanese sovereignty in violation of Security Council Resolution 1701, to which Lebanon reaffirms its commitment and its respects of all relevant Security Council resolutions. I take this opportunity to thank all the troop contributing countries to UNIFIL. UNIFIL's mandate was renewed by the Security Council at the end of August. However, the mission entrusted to the UN force is not complete without close cooperation and permanent coordination with the Lebanese army. This would contribute to consolidating peace and security in the region and would restore the authority of the Lebanese state over its entire territories within our internationally recognized borders. Lebanon welcomes the start of the oil and gas exploration in its territorial waters and looks forward to playing a constructive role in the future in the Mediterranean basin in areas such as energy. Mr. President, parts of the Middle East are witnessing concerning levels of political and security instability, casting a shadow over the countries of the region and their peoples. It is worth noting, however, that there are remarkable exceptions of stability, development, and growth in the Arab Gulf countries. These countries and their people are dear to our hearts. Lebanon and its people owe them a lot of gratitude and appreciation. In this context, we welcome the return of the Syrian Arab Republic to exercise its membership in the League of Arab States and we welcome the Saudi-Iranian agreement. On the other hand, the brotherly Palestinian people continues to languish under occupation and to struggle for their inalienable human rights. As the need to alleviate the suffering of the Palestinian people increases, we reaffirm our attachment to a just and comprehensive peace based on the two-state solution and on international references, mainly Security Council Resolutions 242 and 338. I seize the opportunity today to recall the Arab Peace Initiative adopted by the Beirut Summit in 2002, which laid the foundations for the desired peace. In this context, and as a country that has hosted hundreds of, and of thousands of Palestinian refugees since 1948, Lebanon would like to remind the international community again of its humanitarian and moral responsibility towards the refugees of Palestine and calls for a full support to UNRWA to enable it to continue carrying out its mission pending the final solution. Mr. President, we have always said that the world is witnessing cross-border challenges. 
which require greater coordination and cooperation between countries, from climate change to viral pandemics to security, food security, cyber security, illegal migration, extremism and terrorism, to name but a few. There are many challenges of a global nature that can only be met through concerted efforts between governments, international organizations, and civil society organizations. I would like here to express our solidarity with the Libyan and Moroccan peoples in the aftermath of the natural disasters which ravaged the two countries. International cooperation based on the principles of partnership and inclusiveness is a sine qua non for the security, safety, and well-being of peoples. The UN and its specialized agencies are at the heart of this international effort, guiding and supporting it with standards and tools. In light of the challenges Lebanon is experiencing at the national level and despite the regional tensions and their adverse effects in various areas, Lebanon is keen to continue playing the role expected of him at the regional and international levels. Despite the current situation, Lebanon continues to implement the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals and the Paris Climate Agreement. Lebanon has also participated in the COP27 in Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt, and looks forward to the same level of active participation in the COP28 in Dubai, the UAE, wishing the host country and the conference full success. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. President, I would like to take this opportunity to stress the importance of a sovereign and independent Lebanese state, a strong, able and inclusive state cooperating with the international community and friendly and brotherly countries. A Lebanese state that protects the parliamentary democratic system and public and private freedoms, that engages in structural reforms and in strengthening the rule of law, citizenship, accountability and justice. A Lebanese state that believes in tolerance and brotherly relations, that adopts a policy of dissociation and stays away from the policy of axis, a Lebanese state which is an urgent need for security, peace, stability, and prosperity in the region. And the best way for all of us to keep pace with changes and mitigate negative repercussions building the future and facing the challenges of poverty, unemployment, brain drain, extremism and terrorism, thus avoiding the unknown. In conclusion, allow me, Mr. President, to conclude by recalling the pillars you have laid for your vision to lead the General Assembly in its current session. Peace, prosperity, progress and sustainability summarize indeed the aspirations of all our countries and peoples. There can be no secure and prosperous future for us all without upholding these pillars, which in turn shall not be achieved without solidarity and collective action to avoid further wars, conflicts, challenges, human tragedies, and material and environmental losses. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay. On behalf of the Assembly, I wish to thank the Head of Government of the Lebanese Republic for the statement just made.